ESC PWM frequency has a huge effect on your PID tune, and the addition of variable PWM frequency as an option in BL Holly 32 has people adjusting their low end PWM down uh, farther than ever before. But what kind of impacts does that have on their PID tunes? What do you have to adjust as you go up or down, either in your low end or high end range of PWM frequency? Well, today we're gonna take a look at it using this bad boy as an example, and we'll be able to see the differences, the huge differences we get versus a high or low PWM frequency in this gigantic, massive 10 inch quad. Now, before we get into it, if you want to see me wrestle this beast and uh, tune it up from Betaflight 4.2.11 with all kinds of wobbles and shakes into Betaflight 4.3, where we have it nice and crisp, check out the Patreon. I will have a follow-up video to this one talking about the variable PWM stuff, and then, of course, the specifics in tuning something like this monster. In BL Heli 32 configurator, we now have the options of the variable PWM frequency. You can see you can set that to the low and the high. That has more and more people setting their low down at something like 24 to 16 kilohertz and their high at the by RPM setting. And that is a great setting. That is going to increase your low end torque, but you will have to make or should have to make tuning adjustments as a result of that. Vice versa, if you do elect not to do that and you're going to set this lower frequency up higher, basically the higher you go on this, the lower low end uh, braking torque you're going to get. And again, that will have impacts on your PID tune. But that all said, what are the downsides of running this P lower PWM frequency down at the bottom? I would definitely recommend running the high end at the by RPM. That takes care of any aliasing issues that you may have, which are pretty infrequent, but nevertheless, it just takes it off the plate. You don't have to deal with it. But you know, why not just put this down at 16? Well, that low end torque is going to increase the electrical noise coming from your motors. Now, on a smaller quad, it's not a big deal, but on a bigger quad like that 10 inch with a 3115 motor, so 31 millimeters of diameters, 15 millimeters high, they're huge. It is going to increase, again, the electrical noise coming off your ESC. So you're going to have to have robust ESC filtering. So that's going to be capacitors on each ESC, hopefully of individual ESCs. But if you have a four-in-one, it probably will be a challenge. And God forbid you have an all-in-one ESC, which it would be really weird to have on such a quad that big. But you just have to be prepared for that. And you'll see that showing up, that increased electrical noise in your feed if you have analog. Now, on the flip side of it, as you increase this low end one here, and what's the downside there? Well, the tuning is going to get more difficult because your braking force is going to be a lot less. And to some extent, if you set this too high, it will just be really challenging to get it not to wobble or uh, shake or bobble. It's almost like active braking, like back in the day when that was turned off. It's not turned off, but the braking force is just so weak that it's hard to get those motors to spin down. You have those big 10 inch props that it has to spin those down. So in general, 16 is great for tuning, but electrical noise and isolation will have to be your top priority in your build. For example, that 10 inch quad has individual ESCs with a capacitor on each ESC, and then also a capacitor on the lead from the battery as well. So there's a pretty decent amount of overall capacitance on it. Of course, it could always be a little bit more. I still see some lines in the electrical feed, but the tuning is a lot better with it, with the 16 as a low and the by RPM as a high. So that hits the ups and downs of that setting just in general with electrical noise you have to deal with versus the braking torque increase. So your motors essentially become more powerful to brake with a lower low end PWM frequency setting. That said, if we need a higher low end PWM frequency setting because of electrical isolation issues that you're struggling with, you know, what can you do in your tunes or as you're moving that up and down, what do you have to do in your tunes to adjust for that setting change? And we're looking in here at the sliders in Betaflight 4.3. The two main things that you're gonna have to adjust are this master multiplier and most likely the damping. So the slider ramifications most likely are the same direction, which is kind of nice. In BL Heli Configurator, as you slide the PWM frequency low up, so you're sliding it to the right, you will also want to take a look at sliding your master multiplier up to the right as well to somewhat try to compensate for the low end torque. Now, it's not 
the same exact thing. It's not an exact one-to-one -one compensation. You can't say, well, I'll just increase it and just even move the slider up all is else equal. No, it's better to have the low end torque because that's a physical feature and property where this is just changing some timing basically by moving this up. The other slider you may need to increase as well as you might start to see some bounce back show up when your flips and rolls. So you might need to increase your damping slider here. Um, it depends, you know, if you don't see any bounce back, don't worry about that one. But at least they're, what's nice is they're in the right direction. As you move this slider up, then you may need to also move this and more often the master multiplier. Now, another thing you might need to contend with is as you're moving that low end PWM frequency slider up, in BL Heli Configurator, you might notice that when you do a punch out and then get off the throttle, the quad has a tendency to kind of oscillate and wobble some more. Of course, increasing that master multiplier will make that better, but if you can't juz that out all the way or you get to the, the max where you can move that master all the way up, then the other thing you might want to add in is thrust linear, checking that on. With thrust linear, you know, that default is 20. You can go up to as high as 50. You can actually go way above that, but I've gone up to as high as 50 on a quad. So keep that in mind. And that is really where you notice that if you have throttle, like hover throttle percentage and everything's fine there, but when it throttles all the way down at zero, that's when it really seems to lose authority. Well then bring in thrust linear and that will try to compensate for when you have the throttle below the hover point level and to kind of increase, uh, again, it's just a timing thing with these PID gains to try to you know, address that wobbling issue that you may be experiencing. But again, I wouldn't jump to thrust linear as the first thing. That would be the third thing you'd want to take a look at. First, you want to work most primarily on that master multiplier. Um, damping, again, if you have any bounce back issues, and then if you still have some low end wobble stuff, then go ahead and tick on thrust linear and increase that percentage. Now, of course, that works in reverse as well. If you have this slider up at 48 and you're bringing this down to try out 24 or 16, you may need to go into beta flight and reduce your master multiplier, turn off thrust linear, things of that nature. You probably can get away with a little less damping uh, gain on your quad. So, you know, it goes both directions. Again, if you're interested in seeing the incredible difference that 16 versus 48K for the lower PWM frequency makes on something like this, check out the Patreon only video this week. It's gonna have a link down below. It's available right now. And of course, in doing that, it resulted in this. So obviously that is not flyable. So we needed to, at that point, reduce the PIDs at master slider gain. And can I ask if this video was helpful for you to hit that like button down below, it helps it get out to more people. And if you're interested in seeing the number one thing you need to know for attempting any type of PID tuning and really making any tweaks or adjustments to your quad settings, check out this video. It's only a couple minutes and it is the key relationships that you must know. Thanks everybody. I hope this helps.